Northern Virginia, and I'm an anarchist. And today, I'm here at the Compass at VCU to spread the message of freedom on this fine August day. And I have with me on my new anarchy armband. My girlfriend made me the uh, gold and the black uh, to represent free market anarchism. But at the same time, we're appropriating all colors. So it doesn't really matter what kind of color uh, you, you choose to be. It doesn't really matter in the end. You know, as long as uh, we're not violently forcing our ideas onto each other, you know, you can live in what kind of preference of community you want to live in. Uh, you know, I have also have a friend here in, uh, in Richmond. Her name's uh, Rachel, who also makes armbands. If you guys are interested in, um, I guess, showing off, you know, showing that you're not afraid to hide in the closet, you're not afraid to get out of your step up and uh, to show them what truth looks like. You know, to become the local philosophy doctors in your neighborhood. So, um, I guess with that, uh, let's start uh, spreading anarchy. So, I mean, if they could send Wesley Snipes into, into a cage for three, year, three years for not paying his taxes, they could certainly send anyone else into a cage Word. for not paying their taxes. Which is still against your right as a person. Yeah, you don't have an economic choice. And that's how they force you. Yeah. Wow. And that's the hidden violence behind government, and that it only knows how to solve problems the one way. And that's to the threat of and use of violence to solve any problems. But versus the already plurality of nonviolent solutions that us four already share. Mm -hmm. Right? So they trick us into compromising our moral beliefs. Yeah. Right. right. So what's immoral in life is actually portrayed as yeah. morals to society. Exactly. Right. But when you actually break it down the way it's you break it down, morals, immoral. if no one learns this, then how will we ever prosper? Which is so funny because. It, what I, I start saying to a lot of people, if everyone believes it, it becomes true. Yeah. So right. if if everyone out here right now believes that, you know, you're not supposed to smoke outside because you can get kidnapped, thrown in a cage, and taken against your will, they're not gonna do it because they believe it. Right. But for the four people that sit here and believe that, well, there's nothing wrong with it. I mean, that's like saying if I go get that leaf and I burn it and I yeah. roll it up and I start smoking it. They'll suspect you, they'll have reasonable suspicion, it's like, it looked like a plant, you know? It's a uh -huh. plant. And that's the thing with government, that it forces people, if you don't have the freedom to disassociate or associate based on preferences. Mm -hmm. And we can have communities of preferences. You can have an apartment complex that's 420 friendly, one across the street that's not, right? But of course the government only knows how to force one pre preference, the majority preference onto everyone. Right. You know, they say it's the greatest good for the majority, but it's also the greatest evil for the minority. Right. Right? So the, the point of it is you break life, you realize the hidden violence behind government, that they have a monopoly on a lot of the services that they force yeah. us to pay for. They have a monopoly on courts, on judges, on exactly, law, they have exactly. a monopoly on security, exactly. on roads. You can't cancel, unsubscribe, or have the freedom to provide a better service. It's not going to be harmful and abusive to exactly. the people who wants to pay for that, to the consumers. Exactly. Very good control. Yeah. It's funny because the government states that it's illegal to have a monopoly, but yet they're a monopoly. Thank you, and yeah. They don't want anyone else to have a monopoly because that they would just what it will. create competition. Right. It'll create right. a new life. New create a new life. You know, that. I have a question for you. What Please. do you think about currency? Currency. Thank you. Yes, there's another monopoly on that too. All right, yeah. so before 1913, there used to be a variety of different kind of currencies. Yeah, it used to be point. trade. Yeah. Barter skill system. for skill. Yes, yeah, skills for skills, all this sort of stuff. And then the government came in and said, sorry, no one's allowed to trade in any other currency exactly. except for the US dollar. Right. Exactly. So whenever you have a monopoly, anything you have to always remember the That's price of that always goes up and the quality goes down right. so over 90 percent of the value of the dollar in your pocket today has lost its value exactly, exactly. That's why back in the day if we got a dollar so you can't get nothing yeah else. it used to be uh, worse you can't even shit. get a bag of chips with a dollar right exactly. yeah you get half a bag of air <laughs> yeah. and it's so funny because honestly i look at it i think about it, i was like you know somebody must have created somebody came with an idea because you remember back in the day it was butter yeah it was I want to go to the West Coast to go get some gold, and with that gold, I can pay my family and right. take care of them. But instead, someone must have grabbed all exactly. that gold, and it, it should was be. like, we're gonna create a currency off of this gold, yeah, and charge people to pay us more money. It's, it's a thin line between needs and want. Yeah. You just cancel that out. They yeah. make everyone believe that they need money when you actually just you don't. You don't need it. Because, for example, you're sitting here, you have a camera. Yes, you had to purchase this camera, but for you to purchase that camera, you could have sat there and you told that person, "Well, I do this." I will trade you this amount of time for that camera. Right. And they would have been like, that sounds good. You can mow my lawn for 10 days. Right. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, and, and, that's, and, that, and that's the thing where we really should go because the government doesn't hate hates that because they can't tax it. Right. They can't regulate that. They right. can't tax free will. They can't tax free will. And that's the point of the direction we have to start going. See the hidden violence on the monopoly that they have and start going outside of that, right? Yeah, uh, yeah the currency is a big example. There's a guy who tried to, our USPS, the post office, mm -hmm. there's a monopoly on first class mail, right? You know, that's why FedEx and UPS can't deliver mail because there's a monopoly on it. They can only deliver packages. Mm -hmm. 
is why the rise of the, the cost of stamps has risen over 150%, mm -hmm. right? Because there's no freedom to exactly, compete. Exactly. They're trying to right. cut off Saturdays. They're not a real business, right? Exactly. They're a government agency. So it's not like they're trying to, uh, to, to come and meet the needs of the consumers. They're not. They're yeah. trying to meet the needs of, of their own, right? They try to remove all the clocks inside of the, the post offices because it took so long on the lines, yeah. thinking that's going to help distract it, yeah. right? right? So it's just, they're, they're just sneaky ways right. of trying so to prevent it. New age it. slaves. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Slaves. Exactly. You know, honestly, this is my business card. Um, basically, I realize everything that you're saying, and I agree with you. Like, I feel like with Black Adam and stuff like that, like I really am looking to to and, and not change, but at least let people realize yeah. what you're doing. Yeah. You're basically letting people realize, like, oh shit, mm -hmm. it starts with one. Right. And by the time you have a hundred people. That'll multiply easy. Yeah, it, it, once you unplug from the matrix, you can't plug yourself back in. Exactly. Right? Once you see for the hidden vines in the matrix that that is, you exactly. can't look at the world the same. And actually, that's interesting. Yeah, it's, it's, it's the entrepreneurs and people that create this right. stuff exactly. that's going to solve these problems. Exactly. You know? Uh, Once somebody does it, the next person be like, why can't I? Why can't I do exactly. it better, right? Yeah. All right we cool. work with music, straight right. up. And I realized through music, which was one of the most popular things back in the day, like, why can't we go through a renaissance period again? Right. And build our nation back. But, yeah, yeah. You'll find a problem with that. All right, so copyrights is another hidden vines. Without yeah. a government, there'd be no such thing as copyright or patents or anything like that. Because okay. it's kind of like saying, I see my neighbor mowing his lawn a certain way, I want to mow my lawn a certain way, yeah. right? Uh -huh. I didn't steal anything from you. You know, ideas are, there's no scarcity in ideas. Right. Right? Exactly. And that helped people improve. You know, exactly. I love your voice. I want to exactly. do a cover song. It's like, hey, that's not that's fine. People will know the original song. People will still want to encourage the original artists, right? Exactly. People know the difference between a knockoff band and the real deal, right? right? <laughs> so, but because of copyrights, it prevents people from trying to express and explore and trying to try to make things better, you know, in any idea exactly. and trying to improve. So it halts the creativity. It does. It, it grinds it. it. It suffocates it. Because by this time period, honestly, if you look at it, all concepts of movies are concepts of life. Yeah. So for for example, when I was four years old and a movie came out like Back to the Future, why is it that we reached this time and age and we haven't accomplished that yet? Right. Because they put a halt on society. Like, yeah. Hey man, like I said, dude, you're good. You like it? Sure, man, absolutely. <laughs> this this man. is really ill. Like, I'm glad that people out here realize this. Like, because honestly, sometimes I sit down and I think about it. Right. I'm like, yo, do people really think about this? Yeah, yeah, uh, and that's why I feel like, uh, for me, that's why I'm out here, right? Yeah. I found another way actually just talking about it, using my real voice. The government doesn't want you to use your real voice. Yeah. They want to say your voice is a piece of paper to chat mm -hmm. and use every four years. They're afraid if we actually use our real voice, we reach out and connect and realize that we right. share these fundamental values against that violence. Uh -huh. And then we'd realize we never needed a state to begin exactly. with. Exactly. Mm -hmm. You gotta believe in magic. Your voice is magic. It yeah. can cause something to alter itself without you literally physically doing anything. You just speak. Yeah. Cool. Well, this is great. All right. So this philosophy, uh, this philosophy is called anarchy. All right. Yeah. So by definition, like in science, anions and canons, and means without. Mm -hmm. Archy means political rulers. We can have rules. There's just no need for political rulers. Right. Exactly. Right. Strangers, arbitrary people sitting on city council, arbitrary dictating your life and how best your life should be lived. Right. Exactly. Right. Only you can decide that for yourself. Exactly. Right. All right. Cool. Let me give you uh, uh, some pamphlets to share that. Uh, we meet up, uh, we're actually having a meeting, it's the philosophy club. So this is a non-political organization, you know, okay. just turn to our community and solve these problems, find entrepreneurship ideas and turn away from that government, turn away from that which that goes against our, our moral values to begin yeah. with. Thank you. Yeah, man. This is an interesting thing. What is peaceful parenting? Yeah, well, yeah, a lot of so like a lot of this violence is, is taught, especially uh, at the family level. You know, it's uh, and that's that's where I mean, children are nothing but sponges. They absorb their cultural surroundings and like exactly. mirrors reflect that back. You know, so we can't just say state violence is wrong. You have to universalize say all, all the kind of violence we do to each other. And then so we end the physical violence we do to each other, and through that extension extrapolation, we start realizing the like the mental, like what you mentioned earlier. You know, the way like yelling at people and stuff like that, like the passive aggressiveness and that, those kinds of extrapolation of violence. You know, let's end first the violence we do to each other and do that extension we end the violence we do to animals we end the violence that's yeah. up to the environment right but first we got to do first end the violence we do it with each other right at home right at home all right cool man thanks man i'm harold awesome awesome pleasure to meet you austin trevor trevor pleasure to meet you Same trevor. Here. but hey man you gotta remember if we might not be the generation that sees it and we might pass away but if we i think it's our generation i yeah. think it's our you time you think it is yeah i know it is i'm gonna take your word for it i know it's i don't want my children to be doing something that they'll look up man. to me and say you should have done something right exactly. all right man take good care and that's I the hidden like, vines behind government, and that government only knows how to solve it. Say again? So that's why you know. Yeah, yeah. He just you recently got out. Recently, just finally got out. And that's he's saying the same thing as theft. 
right? So then, then that's the hidden bias behind government, and that government only knows how to solve problems the one way, singular way, and that's through the throat of and use of violence to solve any problems versus the plurality of nonviolent solutions that you and I already share. Right? So they tricked us into compromising a moral integrity and to serve that that only knows how to solve problems through violence. So what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I mean, um, I don't really see any easy way to change that though. Yeah. So, so the loose, yeah, that's, that's, yeah. Because they tell us the only way to change it again is the government, right? Yeah. It's like trying to infiltrate an organization that's founded on violence and overturning it on violence. You know, it's like trying to infiltrate the mafia and say, let's extort people a little less. You know? Versus, let's, so I guess the solution, I'm out here part of Liberate RVA, Liberate Our Community from the idea that violence is set us free. Just turn to our community and turn away from government. Right? Let's turn to the voluntary plurality and nonviolent solutions we already use in our lives and turn away from that politics. Turn away from the illusion that voting was set us free. Right? So what if they legalize cannabis tomorrow? How long did that take? Right? 75 years, it's not a measure of success to gain one scrap of our freedom, <laughs> but to apply so many others in the same amount of time. So I just pretty much that's pretty much uh, you know, we, we can turn to our community. We can ostracize that organization called government, you know, to, to ignore it, to, to not uh, legitimize it. And turn turn to, to that which we already have here, you know. And they're afraid if we actually use our real voice again, that that, that, that we had actually find and realize that we reach out and connect to one another. We share these values against that violence. And if we continue to talk and continue to spread this philosophy to each other, we find out we never needed a government to begin with. We can have a free and voluntary society, right? We can have communities of preferences. You can, if you don't like cannabis, great. You can have an apartment comic building that's, for, that's not for 20 friendly, one across the street that is, right? Yeah. You can, like the Amish community, you can have all kinds of communities. But of course the government only knows how to force one preference, the preference of the majority, onto the minority. Right? So you don't have that freedom to disassociate if you want to. So this, this philosophy is called anarchy. Uh, like in science, anions and cations, and means without, archy means rulers. Like monarchy means one ruler, archy means rule, political rulers. So without political rulers, we can have rules. We can have like a polycentric legal system. There's just no need for strangers arbitrarily dictating how best our lives should be lived. What are you studying? Are you studying a particular major here at BCU? Uh, English major. English major? All right, cool. You know, for me, I, I was doing uh, criminal justice, and I wish uh, I it wasn't until my senior year I realized this is nothing but propaganda and lies. I wish I actually took something more creative approach here. Uh, I guess in the English department, or maybe in the sciences, philosophy. Uh, philosophy. Yes, and they belittle philosophy so much because <laughs> philosophy is logic. So logically, you, you, you teach logic, you logically conclude that governments are moral. You never need it, but they don't want anyone to understand that, or, or they'll handpick philosophers that advocate for the government, and they'll ignore the ones that, that don't. You know? Cool. Well, uh, my name is Cal, by the way. Keenan. Keenan, pleasure to meet you. Well, I got some pamphlets if you like. Sure. Uh, we're actually having a uh, philosophy gathering this Friday, less than a five-minute bike ride from here. Uh, okay. So pretty much, in, uh, there's a lot of this uh, community is already starting up all over the country. Uh, this is especially in Detroit. When you hear the bankruptcy in Detroit, uh, there's people out there actively trying to to reach to, to go to that free and voluntary society and turning away from government. Uh, there's there's several. There's one in New York. There's one in uh, Missouri. It's kind of. You know, it's kind of like, I mean, the most that we can do here is just put that spotlight, you know. I guess you're trying to find nonviolent solutions to kind of end the state, to end the idea, right? And that's enlighten people. Enlighten people, yeah. And yeah, and that's exactly it, you know, change begins with ourselves at home, in our own community. You know, not overseas, not places we've never been to, right? Yeah. Oh, well, this is cool, man. Well, pleasure to meet you, man. You too. Hopefully I'll see you uh, this Friday then. All right, All right. Enjoy, man. Take care. And that's the hidden violence behind government. And that only knows how to solve problems in one way, a singular way. And that's through the threat of the use of violence to solve any problems versus a plurality of non-violent solutions that you and I, actually us four, already share to solve our problems. What are your thoughts on that? Uh, I don't think they should be violent. I mean, I think they should just, you know, have a diplomatic solution and stop being... But if the country does go to war and everything, you know, it's going to be their loss of us. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's and, and the only way I can do violence. Yeah, well, yeah, and the thing is that they can't, and you don't really have a choice, right? To say you don't want to go to war. It's like, regardless, we're still going to take your money and fund, you know, drone bombing children overseas, right? And that's the point, that they have a monopoly on their services. That you can't opt out, unsubscribe, or have the freedom to provide a better service that's not going to be harmful and abusive to, to you, the consumer, right? So they have a monopoly on course, they have a monopoly on security, on judges, on the roads. They can't opt out, cancel their payment, or have the freedom to create something better. 
right? And that's the hidden bias behind government. They have these hidden monopolies on these services, so you're forced to accept and pay for them. Yeah. Oh, uh, well, I guess uh, I'm part of a community called Liberate RBA. Pretty much, let's turn to our community. All right, let's turn to the community that, that, that uses plurality and online. So, should we really share these fundamental values and turn away from government? Right? We can have communities of preferences. You, know, you can have an apartment complex building that's 420 front, one across the street that's not. Right? Uh, so, the things that would be, be awesome, you have these communities of preferences. You know, uh, interchangeable, you know, interactive. Instead of what you have with government, we only force this one preference because that's the only way they know how to function. The majority preference over everyone else. Not to mention, the Congress controls Obama like puppets. Yeah, yeah. Oh, they are <laughs> suck puppets to that point. And they don't do anything either. The they government can. really just sits on their ass and like discusses stuff. They probably smoke in the office. They yeah. Don't even know about it. They nope. probably do. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but that's what it means. The rules only apply to us, not to the political rulers. Unfortunately, yeah. they don't know after the either. They don't. They don't. Yeah, these are strangers. Not very strangers. Just strangers arbitrarily deciding, dictating how best your life to be lived. Yeah, and a bunch of people in bed probably have a super light of either. Like, pretty much. Pretty much. All right. Cool. All right. So this philosophy. It's called anarchy. Uh, even like in science, and like analyze and canonize, and means without. Archy means rulers. We can have rules. There's just no need for political rulers, strangers, arbitrarily dictating our lives. You know, we can have a polycentric legal system instead of this monopoly on law that they have. Uh, well, let me give you some pamphlets then. Uh, we're meeting this Friday. It's a philosophical discussion. So this is part of Liberate RBA. It's a non-political organization, and uh, so there's no none of this like uh, political war that you see already. You know? Oh yeah. I hate it. Yeah, yeah. It's like I hate the. I I do own the handgun in my bed, but I don't use it for violence. Right. Anything. Self-defense. I hate idiots using them for some stupid wrong reason and stuff and showing them up. Say, oh, look, I got one. No, that's not what you do. It's for personal self-defense. Yeah. And I don't want to kind of follow in any smart ideas because I don't like little kids, you know? Right. That's you know, one of the main reasons why I have one. Yeah, and you'll, you'll find, uh, great, great, and then you'll find like uh, like a lot of places where they have like the least amounts of gun laws, you have the lowest amount of crime. Whereas all the cities where have the most amounts of gun regulations, you have so much crime like in Chicago, right? So the opposite always happens whenever government gets involved. And yeah. they mess things up and they make things up worse, worse, worse. Than they are. Yeah. Well, my name is Cal. Jessica. Jessica, pleasure to meet you. Pleasure to meet you. Well, that's, that's really cool. All right, man. Uh, take good care. Take good care. Thank <laughs> you.